This presentation will demonstrate the appropriate technique for the fixation of a transverse mandibular symphysis fracture with compression osteosynthesis using the lag screw technique. Lag screw fixation uses stabilization by compression that relies on the bony buttressing of the fracture to help stability. The objectives of the exercise are to understand the importance of correct occlusion and anatomical reduction to recreate the original shape of the mandible before fracture fixation, and the correct sequence of fixation using the lag screw technique. The mechanism of a lag screw is now illustrated. One screw is placed at the inferior border. To achieve interfragmentary compression, the hole in the near cortex must allow the screw to glide axially. To assure this movement, the near cortex is over-drilled with the 2.4 mm drill bit. Then using a long 1.8 mm drill bit, drilling is continued through the far cortex. Countersinking allows the maximum contact between the screw head and the underlying bone to optimize compression. As soon as the screw head touches the bone, further tightening of the screw will lead to interfragmentary compression. This process is called the lag screw technique. A second screw is placed superior to the first screw from either direction at a safe distance from the tooth roots. The advantages of the lag screw technique are absolute stability using a minimum of implants and no plate bending. However, this technique needs to be precisely carried out and there can be no corrections. Here is the clinical situation. Preoperative radiographs are needed in two planes usually an OPT and a PA mandible. CT scans may also be used. The standard approach for fractures of the symphysial region is intraoral. The instruments needed are the reduction forceps, the 1.8 and 2.4 millimeter drill bits, the 2.4 1.8 double drill guide, the countersink with handle, the depth gauge, and the 2.4 cruciform screwdriver with holding sleeve. Before open reduction and fixation in the dentate patient, the correct occlusion must be re-established. For this exercise, Ernst ligatures have been selected to hold the occlusion. However, it should be noted that many surgeons prefer MMF with arch bars because of the increased stability. For this model, it's necessary to pre-drill two monocortical holes at the superior border on either side of the fracture to help when placing the reduction forceps. In the clinical situation, care should be taken not to harm the dental roots. The mandible halves are manipulated until anatomic reduction is achieved. The 2.4 mm glide hole is made near the inferior border of the mandible in the canine region. First the drill guide is placed perpendicular to the bone to avoid slippage. The drill is then redirected perpendicular to the fracture line. The drill path must not break through on the lingual cortex of the mandible. Next, a thread hole is drilled. The 1.8 drill guide is placed into the glide hole. Then, using a long 1.8 mm drill bit, drilling is continued through the far cortex. Countersinking is done by hand taking care not to countersink too deeply to avoid removing the cortical bone buttress. The screw length is determined with the depth gauge. When using the lag screw technique, two millimeters are added to the measurement to ensure that the cortex will be fully engaged by the screw threads. In this exercise, the bone is not tapped.
However, some surgeons feel that tapping is indicated in dense symphysial bone. It should be noted that the 2.4 mm screw glides through the near hole while engaging in the far fragment. Compression is achieved as the screw head engages into the countersunk portion of the near fragment. A second screw, parallel and superior to the first screw, is required to prevent rotation of the fragments. The location for this screw has to be carefully chosen so as not to harm dental roots. This screw can be placed from either direction using the same procedure. The reduction forceps is removed. Adequate reduction is confirmed and the fixation is complete. There can be no gap at the lingual aspect that would lead to occlusal disturbance and mandibular widening. The Ernst ligatures are removed. The mandible is now functionally stable. The post-operative radiograph illustrates the clinical result. The exercise has shown the importance of correct occlusion and anatomical reduction to recreate the original shape of the mandible before fracture fixation and the proper sequence for insertion of the lag screws.